Hi guys, today I will explain how the peak detector works. So let's do the job and let's explain the peak detector. Passive and active. So the passive, de the, the passive peak detector, as you may know, is just the simple circuit with a diode and a capacitor. But this circuit here has uh, some problems, mainly regarding the drop voltage of the diode here. So basically, whenever you have a voltage which is less than the diode here, you won't be able to detect that peak. So you need to, to use the active configuration instead to if you want to have a precise if you want to have a, a precise peak detector. How does it work? Well, basically you have the signal VIN, which goes inside an op-amp. So the first op-amp acts like a voltage follower. And, uh, uh, well, not a, uh, not a voltage follower, sorry, but as an, an ideal diode. You put the diode here, and then you put the capacitor there. And then you put uh, at the output a voltage follower to separate uh, the impedance here. This circuit though has some limitation. So the first as you may know is the slew rate. The slew rate uh, of these two op-amps uh, can follow very fast signal. And so you have to you have to compensate so you, you have to compensate the uh, the slew rate by adding a feedback. And the second problem is the bias current here and here, which may charge. So the second problem is the bias current. The input bias current of your system, IB, which in turns can, which in turns goes inside the capacitor, can slowly can slowly charge your capacitor, distorting the measurement. So for this reason, this configuration, which ideally can work, won't work in precise environments. So the final circuit that we are going to, to simulate is this. You have, the, you have the V in signal here. And you have the double diode configuration with a peak detector here. Now you have to add a filtering resistor of 1 kilo ohm, which goes inside here. This will help to reduce the bias current. Then a feedback here. And of course, you have to connect the output to the input here. Now let's just put a, a resistor, because you don't want to short. So let's put a 20 kilo ohm resistor. And for what regards this value, I will explain how to design it. So basically, uh, let's see what happens if you put uh, one microfarad capacitor. If you put one microfarad, the calculation that you have to make in order to design C for a peak detector is the following. A uh, um, one microfarad capacitor used in the circuit with, uh, for instance, the LM38 will drop at dv over dt, which is equal to ib over c, where ib is the bias current, which is 40 nanoamps, 10 nanoamps, something of the sort. Let's assume 40 nanoamps, you have a drop of the V over the T, which is equal to 0, not 0 volt for seconds. And, the, and this microfarad capacitor would follow, basically, the V over the T equal to the current at the output, E out, over C, which is equal to 0 0.02 volt at microseconds. So basically, 
what you are saying is that you have to design the capacitor here according to the how fast the signal you want to go how fast you want to follow um, the signal um, so uh, if you if you decrease C the zero rate will increase meaning that uh, if the signal changes faster your peak detector will react faster so as a fan I will make the different I will make two simulation with uh, first one microfarad and second with one nanofarad and uh, you will notice the difference so let's open LT spice and let's see no I don't want to update so let's see this is the input voltage let's call it V in and let, let me put uh, uh, I shouldn't put a sign by the way because it is it is wrong but uh, let me put a sign of, of, of one volt and one kilohertz just uh, just for simplicity so let me put uh, the first peak detector as a, as a passive peak detector as the passive peak detector with the one microfarad and let's run the simulation for um, one milli so you have your sign here um, let me prolong the simulation for 100 milli otherwise it's too hard to notice and so now is detecting uh, the peaks if I put 2 volts the input uh, the output value will basically decrease so more than a more than a peak detector this has become basically uh, a AC DC converter let me put uh, a Schottky diode now the result is not even making sense so be careful in selecting the components and for now let's use a uh, ideal diode if we want to increase if we increase the the value the, the frequency you will have you will have a, a ripple decrease in the peak detector but by the way is still working properly meaning that whenever there is a peak he will uh, increase a bit so it, it is uh, strangely enough it is uh, um, working more or less as expected but if I put a signal which is less than the dropout voltage of the diode for instance 0 0.5 then it won't work properly as I expected independent from the frequency so you can even put 1 kilohertz it doesn't matter but it won't won't pro properly as expected and even if I put uh, 1 milliohm uh, 100 milliohm as an amplitude well as you can imagine it won't even turn off so this is not the solution now let's use this configuration let's use this configuration instead so let me cancel this and let me use the uh, the op amp um, let's see if there is the LM uh, this is a LM358 uh, Pico input current, Pico amp input current okay this is great this should be good because it has a Pico amp current and uh, so this value will decrease since it has a Pico amps and so the um, and so the, the V over the T should be even higher so it is good um, let's use this then and let's put uh, as I said in the theory let's put this uh, by the way I don't know uh, I don't know what these pins are honestly let me put this to zero and let me supply the power the, the op amp with uh, 10 volts and let me call it V plus um, let me connect the input voltage 
to here and let me use uh, the diode here and the peak detector and the true peak detector here with uh, one nano. Uh, now let me put one kilo ohm resistor. Let me put the same op amp here, the feedback here, and this here. Now let me close the loop, not with a short but with 20 kilo ohm resistor, and let's run the simulation. Uh, maybe because these uh, these two pumps, uh, maybe these two pumps have this uh, some sort of pin which I don't know, and if you don't connect them, it will cause some sort of problem. So let me use uh, let me use for now just the universal op pump. Ah, as I thought, it was the the op pump which was bagged. This pump has gone into saturation, and, and I don't understand the reason. Maybe because ah, okay, so it, it makes sense. You will still need some voltage here. Okay, so uh, so here we have so here we have one nano twenty kilo. Ohm. Uh, this is very strange, by the way. It shouldn't saturate so fast. Yeah, maybe because uh, um, I'm thinking about uh, let me put the Ah, okay. Okay, so now it wor So now it's working. So now I'm. Uh, so okay. So now at the output, I am detecting. I am uh, detecting the peaks. Let me increase the frequency. And so you have the if increase instead the the capacitor, the zero rate will decrease. So it it it, it will basically become a straight line. So you don't have the 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 true peak detector. So if you want to, so as I said before, if you want to um, your circuit to fall over. If you want the circuit to follow a very fast signal like 100 kilohertz, you should at least you should at least expect to have a slower, a faster capacitor, and above all, so this is the um, so whenever the peak occurs, you're gonna have the signal here. This is a sine wave, so um, if I put instead a triangular waveform, let me try it. Uh, let me put um, 10 million as a rise, 10 million as a fall, T on 1 nano, T period 20 milli. Should behave like a... okay, and so I will, I would expect. Let me do to the sign. 
a little bug is the, uh, this simulation is a, a little buggy but it still it still works so now let me mamma mia with one nano one nano one ten kilohertz Now let me use the same uh, the same circuit with just this. So that now you can see the difference. 